I think this is my truest analysis of the show. Not a critique, not a comparison to another show. We are examining the character Sideswipe, a rowdy teenage Autobot in Robots in the Skies made in 2015. This Sideswipe is not the same as the one that appeared in the lore books. That Sideswipe was the pilot of the great Autobot ship The Ark. I think of this one as Sideswipe Jr., a younger bot who happens to have the same name or was nicknamed. According to Wiki, he was almost just called Fastlane, which would have made everything easier. Sideswipe and Strongarm are presented as the younger characters who have to learn from Lieutenant Bumblebee. Bumblebee refers to them as teenagers to reflect their youth and maturity level. And I'm stranded on Earth with two teenagers. Sideswipe has little respect for Optimus Prime and is not very serious around Decepticons like Starscream. Safe to say, Sideswipe and Strongarm are part of the new generation of Cybertronians created after Optimus returned to Allspark to the well. They aren't literally teenagers. Cybertronians don't have babies and they don't physically grow up. Since the events of Robots in the Skies 2015 are meant to be taking place years after Transformers Prime, Strongarm and Sideswipe are only a few years old. They have big adult bodies, but immature brains due to their lack of experience. Now, Sideswipe's character is mostly consistent between the episodes of Robots in Disguise 2015, and that he is a delinquent with a problem listening to others, and he is very insecure. He does not respect the law or other authority figures. He especially hates being bossed around by Strongarm, who is just as old as him. Sideswipe is used to freedom, and he wants to cause trouble for fun. Episode 1 begins with Police Officer Bumblebee leading Cadet Strongarm on a chase after a punk named Sideswipe. Sideswipe is speeding around the statues of famous Autobots, including some of the Transformers Prime cast, and Sideswipe leaves long scratches on the ground in front of Optimus Prime's statue. That punk is going down! That punk is Sideswipe, and while he's about as exciting as this job gets, he's not actually dangerous. When he does meet Optimus in the show, Sideswipe just calls him old and thinks he is useless, and he tries to convince the team that Optimus needs to be left behind. Bumblebee tells Strongarm that Sideswipe is not dangerous. After all, Sideswipe isn't running around stabbing or shooting bots, but he does know how to take out security systems. You're a punk. You know how to take out security systems, don't you? No. Maybe. When first brought to Earth, Sideswipe is thrilled to run loose away from Cybertronian laws. He actually runs from them. Move it, Sideswipe! Back to Hassle Planet Cybertron? Forget that! And forget you two! He didn't have interest in being part of a team, but when Sideswipe becomes part of one, that's when his insecurities surface. Because here is what the show says about this character. He craves attention and validation and is afraid of abandonment. This whole analysis is based on episode 62, Exiles. Within it, Sideswipe expresses major distress at being left behind and being alone. He also explains clearly that he used to move from home to home. Now, Sideswipe's behavior becomes clear. He's a delinquent because he had no stable role models growing up. My own speculation is post-war Transformers Prime is similar to IDW too. By that I mean young Cybertronians are adopted by new ones. It just makes sense to me that Team Prime would help any new Cybertronian rising from the holy hole, not just let them run loose unprotected. They would tell them about the war, educate them, and keep them away from Decepticons who may want to brainwash or hurt them. Sideswipe isn't talking about moving homes because his home cities were being destroyed. He's a post-war kid. In the episodes, he literally cries for people to not leave him. He's revealing how many times he was abandoned by loved ones. He has a realistic and relatable story. He's like a foster child bouncing between homes but never being claimed by a single stable family. That's the source of his insecurity, why he clings to role models and acts rashly to impress them. That's why he assumes that people want to kick him off the team or take his place. We don't know why he was abandoned, but that is how Sideswipe got used to living by no rules and facing no consequences. And where a strong arm went to an academy, we might assume Sideswipe went to no school. In the episode Jazz comes in, he easily takes down Sideswipe, but Jazz's skill and chill attitude intrigues him. Sideswipe tries not to seem too interested while he asks Jazz about his battle move. Sideswipe does know who Jazz is as a famous Autobot, and really wants Jazz to stay around to teach him things. It's a rare occurrence where Sideswipe actually wants to learn from someone. Jazz is laid back, he's not ordering him around. Sideswipe likes him. 
Sideswipe tries to impress him by attacking a Decepticon all on his own. He volunteers to team up with Jazz. He vents to him. We'll have a better chance of finding him if we split into two groups. I'll go with Jazz. I'm not sure that's... Hey, I don't mind. Kid has spark. Jazz patiently tells Sideswipe that he's trying too hard. As Jazz is leaving, Sideswipe wants to know when he'll be back. You're gonna stay a while though, right? Maybe you could teach me, uh, us some of your moves. Then you'll come back? Wouldn't mind another road trip. I could learn a lot from you. I think that's my line. Windblade gets Sideswipe's admiration as well. She gives him the attention he craves, isn't bossing him around, and seems to have badass moves to teach him. He was very eager to be teammates with her as well. I know the viewer's instinct is to treat Windblade like a crush to Sideswipe just for being female and interesting to Sideswipe. But you may interpret it another way, because she is, after all, at least a thousand years older than him. She could just be another role model for him and he will soak up the attention she gives him. In any case, Sideswipe wants her approval, and will even be disappointed if his joke isn't acknowledged. He wants Windblade to agree with his feelings against Strongarm, to be validated, and he is disheartened when Windblade does give Strongarm credit. When Windblade tries to leave, like with Jazz, Sideswipe really doesn't want her to go. Then I guess it's time for me to say goodbye. What? You can't go? B, tell Windblade she can't go! My next Decepticon's away from here, Slick. Can't keep it waiting. Sounds like a team-up situation. Can we? I mean, I think Windblade would be a great addition. Like, tactically... Further in the series, the story emphasizes Sideswipe's insecurities. I appreciate that they put in the signs of Sideswipe's neglected past in a few episodes. Instead of the information only appearing in one episode, when you sprinkle in his character traits and backstory across episodes, it comes across as the writers knew what they wanted to do with this character. In episode 49, Blurred, Blur from RescueBots Academy crosses over to temporarily hang out with the B-Team in Robots in Disguise 2015. Sideswipe is hostile to the new bot, assuming a new teammate means he is going to be replaced, not that the team is going to simply expand. What's he doing? Angling for a spot on our team? Why not? Some days it seems like you don't want one. Yo, Sideswipe! Did I do something wrong? I thought we were bros. Uh, bros don't stab each other in the back plate. You once said you wanted a spot in the B team. Don't think I forgot. I didn't say I wanted your spot. And if B offered it to you, would you really say no? Don't touch anything. Okay, I've been cool because I'm on your turf, but that's it. You've been busting on me since I got here, Crankshaft. Get it through your engine case. I'm trying to help, not run you out of town. There's really no reason for Sideswipe to assume what he does. Something may have happened in his past, perhaps he was kicked out from a family and replaced by another young Cybertronian. But that's just speculation. Blur calls Sideswipe out for his irrational belief, and Sideswipe seems to feel bad but still has his belief until the end of the episode. Impressive work today, Blur. It got me thinking. There's no need to say it. After all my screw-ups, you found my perfect replacement. I'm out of here. Yeah, before you pack, do you mind if I praise your teamwork with Blur? In The Great Defied, episode 52, Sideswipe is separated into two. One is the vulnerable side of him, the other is his rude delinquent side. The vulnerable side of Sideswipe also shows fear of abandonment, and this is still before the episode Sideswipe actually says he has moved between homes. He tries to ask Bumblebee if he'll get rid of anyone because he doesn't want to be that one. Which one are you going to keep? Me, right? There are several lines in the episode said by Sideswipe's vulnerable side, which is the greatest reveal of Sideswipe's deepest feelings. And I don't want the team to drop me and leave me alone forever. You're not leaving me behind, are you? How do I know you'll still be here when I get back? <clears throat> I just want to say, if you're going to be getting rid of one of us, no one's getting rid of anyone. Ten episodes later, episode 62 Exiles, is when Sideswipe's insecurities are properly addressed. The Autobots' junkyard base is attacked by heavy missile fire, and they decide to flee through the ground bridge. Sideswipe is the last to drive toward the ground bridge, but a missile strike knocks him off course and he lifts his head to see everyone is gone and the ground bridge is closing. 
seeing himself abandoned in the battlefield under the fire of every Decepticon, Sideswipe despairs and runs helplessly around. Bumblebee hadn't abandoned Sideswipe, to his breathless relief. Sideswipe tries to comfort Denny, whose home was just destroyed, by telling him that a home is just a place and moving is not a big deal. Come on, Denny. Scrapyard's just another place, right? I've moved from home to home a million times. After a while, it's no big deal. The moves and lack of family have truly disturbed Sideswipe, though. It's clear in his behavior and emotions. After this, Sideswipe is very jumpy and makes this joke. Sure, send Sideswipe out by himself on a mission. You really are trying to get rid of me, aren't you? Of course not. You're just best suited for the job. After his experience feeling abandoned on the battlefield, Sideswipe is extra clingy to the team. He stays close and has issues being told to hang back for strategic reasons. I was thinking, if this is a trap, we should probably stick together. Strength in numbers and all that. I mean, splitting up would be a bad move, right, B? The only bad move right now is you riding my bumper. Back off! I need you to watch behind us in case we're attacked from the rear. So fall back, okay? Fall back. Way back. He also can't help but call others on the comms. Stronger, you there? Affirmative. What's wrong? Nothing. Just making sure the comms are working. They are. Unlike you, apparently. Grimlock, what's your 20? I'm on Earth. Why? Aren't you? Sideswipe, keep radio silence. Near the end of the episode, though, Bumblebee specifically tells Sideswipe that they will be back and they won't leave him. We'll finish up in there, then come help you. We're not gonna leave you. You have my word. Sure. Okay. Because from episode 1, Bumblebee described Sideswipe as a good kid who just needs some guidance. He was always telling Sideswipe throughout the show that no one was going to leave him. Second, go easy on Sideswipe. He's an okay kid. He just needs some guidance and... Bumblebee helped give Sideswipe a home and a family, even if they fight a lot. Sideswipe appreciates it, saying that he would never leave them behind, even if he turns that line into a joke. Yup! And lucky for all of you, I'd never leave any of you behind. Most of you, anyway. <laughs>